Hey, welcome back to another video for our Candy Crush Simulator. We're going to illustrate the uh, concept of recursion in a flood fill algorithm. So up until this point, all we've done is created some buttons and we've created a custom idea called My Button. So now we're going to actually go into the form and start coding. So I'm going to right click on the form and choose View Code. And this will bring up our form and so we can, we can put our action, actions in here. So let's go into the uh, variables. Let's, let's start setting up some variables that we'll be using throughout the app. So we're going to add three different variables that will be used kind of globally in this application. First of all, we'll create button grid, which is a two-dimensional array that contains buttons, and the class is my button. Then the second is we will have two different uh, color variables. One's called current color, and the other is original color. And this will be used when we do flood fill and we can change the background color on adjacent buttons. Then we'll have another variable called rows and columns, which are both integers, which count the number of rows and columns in our app. So the first thing we want to do is fill this panel with buttons. So we're going to need a function that will populate the grid. And what this will do is we'll create buttons programmatically and put them in the panel. All right, so let's get some variables to do some scaling and figuring out how big our buttons are going to be and where they will be placed. So let's create an xy counter variable, and we'll set it to zero. Then we'll, we'll calculate the number of columns that we'll have in our panel. So this will depend on the height of the panel divided by the button size, as well as the width of the panel divided by the button size. So now we can fill the button grid. Remember, this is a two-dimensional array of type buttons. And so we'll create a new array and we'll define it to be the number of rows and columns in our buttons. So in order to fill the array, we're going to have to have a two-dimensional loop, so a nested for loop. We'll use R and C for our counters, and it will go from zero to rows and from zero to calls. So the first thing I want to do inside the uh, loop is to create a button. So we will uh, assign a button to um, the position called R comma C it will be a new default button. So you might recall that in the My Button class, the custom button, we gave it a property called row and call. And so we can assign those now with the counter variables R and C. So it's a good practice to put in some comments in code if you're, uh, if you're doing something mildly complex. So the first comment is to say that we will calculate the number of rows and columns based on the panel size and the button size. Then the next is obviously a new 2D array of buttons. So these two for loops are going to create a new button at each row and column location. Next I want to assign a single click handler to every button. So I'm going to assign the click property of this button, and I'm going to invent a new function. I'll call it grid button underscore click. Now since this doesn't exist, I'm going to show potential fixes, and hopefully it will let me create one. And sure enough, it says generate this method called grid button click. So we'll have to come in here and code what's happening whenever we click a button. But for right now, we have a single method for all 50 or 100 buttons that we'll be putting in the panel. All right, the last two things we need to do are add the button itself to the panel. So this is panel1.controls.add, and then inside there you add the control. Now remember this uh, 2D array called button grid contains uh, uh, an array of buttons. So we're adding a button to the panel. Then once it's on the panel, let's change its location. And so we will use some math here to calculate our location. So it's going to be a new point. Now a point is a data structure that contains an integer x value and an integer y value. So x is going to be r times the, uh, the size of the buttons, which is 25, and column times 25. So these should all fit in a nice grid pattern. Now there are just two things I want to do before we con conclude this video. First of all, let's do something down here in the button click. So let's do in a message box, how about? So we'll do a message box show and we'll say you clicked a button. Alright, so that'll just give us some activity to see if the button click is working. Now the last thing is 
This populate grid function is supposed to automatically load when the form loads, right? So the form load is uh, right here, or this is the constructor for form one. And so we can call this populate grid method right here after initializes all the components. So let's test it out and see how our app works. So it looks like we've randomly collected a bunch of buttons. And if I click one of them, I get a click message. So far, so good. These uh, buttons don't have any actions on them yet, and neither does reset, but at least we got ourselves a good looking form. So the next, we're, the next video, we're going to start working on some uh, handlers for when we click these buttons, and then when we click the uh, grid buttons.